what exact measures would you suggest should be taken to uh, tackle the issue of illegal immigrants like uh, so that you know when you keep them in detention centers uh, when they are caught and they are kept in detention center is it really uh, uh, needed to keep them uh, separate from other criminals so they don't connive to uh, uh, do other crimes in the country once they are released yeah some some countries will do that we do it uh you can't just put them in uh, in a jail or detention center with traditional or ordinary criminals uh, because then they might get them ideas but they are here on a different context um so therefore they have to be um taken to special centers where they are uh, let's say under surveillance and so forth and goes without saying you can't just put them in an ordinary jail I don't know how it's across the world, but I, I think personally it would be a wrong idea just to uh, make them inmates in a traditional uh, jail uh, or prison. Uh, they have to be taken to a special detention center, and I think that will also secure that at some point of time they can be deported. So, uh, because in, when we face the problem, when we uh, we are we are we are confronting the problem of Ill illegal Bangladeshi immigrants in India. Uh, we often see that the Bangladesh doesn't take them back. There are uh, issues of deporting them is not an easy task because they don't accept them as their citizens. Mm -hmm. So we are faced with the issue of having uh, uh, lakhs or in Karoos, illegal Bangladeshi immigrants uh, with fake IDs in India. And there's an issue of deport. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. they don't take it, them back because they give wrong address or many other times there could be other issues also. Uh, so how do we tackle this issue when a country is not accepting their citizens uh, and they, there are issues in deporting them back when they are saying that they are the they, uh, they are from Bangladesh, but the country doesn't uh, take them back. Yeah. So uh, basically, it's uh, it has to be dependent on a political diplomatic agreement uh, between the two uh, relevant governments. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think over years we have had the same issue uh, in Denmark. We have seen a number of uh, illegal immigrants that were um, uh, asked to leave and wanted to. we wanted to deport them. And then some countries also out here didn't uh, want them back. Um, but I don't see any issue uh, um, or any solution to it um, uh, just to continue a, a political diplomatic negotiation and uh, basically in this particular case it's for india and bangladesh to find a suitable solution to it uh, obviously you can't uh, just put them uh, on a train or whatever and then say uh, uh, go to your country in denmark we're also looking into finding um places uh, in other countries in all other regions where we will um deport these uh, these people until they will be taken back by their own nation and so forth but it takes a lot of uh, discussion and um, at least in Europe for many years there has been a kind of controversial uh, issue uh, but Denmark has taken a lead in the uh, European Union and our Prime Minister has been very very strongly advocating that we need a unified system so we can secure that those who are not allowed to stay in our given nation like Denmark that they will be sent back and if they're the the, the home country or their the country of their or, origin uh, if they're not a, a, a willing then we have to put them up somewhere uh, under secured but also uh, reasonable conditions and that's what we are doing and we see a, a, a lot of countries now looking into these kind of solutions uh, whether that will apply for the particular question that you raised uh, with you with the Bangladeshis in, in India it's not for me to decide of course it's for you to to find out here in India how you will go and tackle that issue but you need to have a, a kind of a solution to it whether you can find it bilaterally or you find other ways of handling it. So basically for you to decide. It's not for me to give advice or uh, tell you what to do. Basically, it's your your decision how to so go. I would like to understand what measures uh, Denmark has adopted and what worked for Denmark uh, when uh, and what is the most effective deterrent 
Oh, when, yeah, uh, mostly, yeah, first and foremost, you need to have a kind of political consensus. How do you go about these uh, uh, legal immigrants? Secondly, you need to have a very strong border uh, uh, police. So you need to have strong, strong uh, border controls and so forth. And if you caught people who are one way or another managing to come into your country and they are not, uh, and they are illegal and not legal, um, and accepted, uh, uh, let's say, uh, immigrants or, or, or workers and so forth, then you have to find solutions how to deport them. And that's what Denmark, uh, we have done. And I think we have a pretty robust system that can deal with it. But if you don't have a secured border, and then meaning that thousands or ten thousands, uh, lakhs of people are just uh, floating through an open, unprotected border, then the issue will just grow and grow. And therefore, um, seen from our point of view, you need a strong, strong border control. You need strict, strict uh, uh, immigration rules and you need to have a system where people who are coming in illegally will be handled and taken care of and secured that they will uh, uh, leave your country at some, at some point of time. And there are different ways of doing it in Europe. Or, uh, some years ago, we were all discussing uh, the uh, Rwanda model where we were uh, uh, make an agreement with the African country Rwanda and we'll set uh, uh, these the deportees down there and so forth. It didn't meet too much of political consensus, or, but now we see other ways of doing it. And, and I think you could, if you are looking for a solution, so why not look, in, uh, you should be looking towards the Europe and see if there are some systems there that could uh, be of relevance to you. But again, it's your issue. And how you will go about it with Bangladesh is for you and your government to handle. But basically, if you don't have a strong uh, border, which is secured and is surveyed, then uh, this problem will not go away. And you can talk about all the social, uh, the economic, um, uh, even political uh, impacts that an uncontrolled illegal immigration will add to the challenges that that you have in West Bengal or in Assam and even here in Delhi. So you have to find a solution to it. And you just uh, closing your eyes would not be the right way of doing things. But again, it's for India to decide what you want to do. Uh, but I think you should uh, try to seek inspiration from across the world. And uh, what? how can modern technologies help us um, in addressing this issue? Uh, is there any, is, are there, modern technologies available which are helping other countries internationally who are quite advanced uh, in tackling this issue? Yeah, of course, there are many ways uh, of controlling your border. If you um, see uh, illegal crossing of borders, you have technologies that can really detect these uh, movements uh, and, and that should not be too difficult. Uh, you can have of course, you can have satellites, drones, you can have cables and surveillance systems and, and so forth that can detect the movements and, and so forth. So that should not be an issue. And then as uh, if people are coming into your country and so forth, uh, you need to do an ID check. And um, just to show a, a dark card, that's not sufficient. You need to verify who this person is and so forth. And I know it's not uh, not that easy technologies are there and I am pretty sure that artificial intelligence very soon will be able to help us one way or another to find out uh, how we go about these things uh, and uh, the other day in fact I was at the National Skill Development Corporation and I saw how they have developed technology so they can uh, see how the different students, uh, are they showing up for the classes? Are they, they taking the courses that are needed for getting the credits? Because if we want to, uh, let's say, hire an um, uh, engineer, no, no, a technician who can uh, uh, maintain or service a flight engine, then we need to know exactly if this person has the, the competences that uh, he or she is claiming. And therefore, that system that they have developed there, where you can see that Mr. Kumar and Mrs. Kumar, in fact, they have attended the classes and the workshops. And uh, then, of course, obviously, you have all the biometrics or 
Well, you can do it with uh, lakhs of people or even crores of people. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure there are ways of doing it. So modern technology is definitely one way of, of doing it. Um, so so uh, what worked for Denmark uh, in resolving this issue in your country? Uh, and uh, a few points you can uh, suggest, like um, maybe uh, stringent first laws. First and foremost, as I said earlier, you need to have a broad uh, political consensus in your society. You need to have a strict uh, border uh, 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 that um, right. uh, a border control. You need to have immigration control. You need to secure that if they have uh, entered illegally uh, the Danish territory, that they are not just left behind, but we are doing raids and controls to secure that they're not finding illegal jobs and so forth. So basically control, uh, strong border control, immigration control and so forth. Uh, uh, but whether you can use the same here in India, that's for you to decide because Denmark, we are only 60 lakh people and you come to 140 crore of people. So, so there's a little bit of difference. Uh, um, but you're also very good at utilizing modern technology, the digital uh, stack and so forth. I'm sure there will be some solutions that could be, be used here. But it's up to you again. And uh, whether you uh, can tackle it or want to tackle it or, or not, then um, it's for you to decide, obviously. The problem is that Bangladesh had the population of 6.8 crore in 1971. Now they are 18 crore, close to 18 crore. So there's a yeah. population explosion. And a large number have, uh, must have migrated uh, to India because there are reports which suggest so that uh, there were studies by Sharifa Begum of Bangladesh um, Institute for Development Studies in Dhaka. It was uh, for the period of 61 to 74. And it stated that nearly 3.5 million people disappeared from East Pakistan between 1961 to 1974 because before 1971 it was East Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And after 71 it was Bangladesh. So there are reports which suggest that people migrated from their, their own um, um, Bangladesh Institute of Development Studies in Dhaka, which uh, studied for a period, for a good number of periods. But their population, uh, there are, there's a population explosion. And of course, the economic uh, conditions are also would be responsible mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and that's... The, the that's... cause is the illegal, uh, uh, because the fake IDs and the touts, Mm -hmm. uh, root cause are the population number of people because the size of Bangladesh is very small. It's, it's just uh, in a little larger than our uh, Chhattisgarh. Mm. And the population is six times more than the Chhattisgarh. Yeah. Right. So, uh, yeah, but uh, it goes without saying. I mean, we are all following these days the uh, US elections and we see to what extent the immigration issue is uh, uh, playing an important uh, some will even say a, a vital role in uh, how the uh, U.S. elections uh, will 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 uh, turn out. So therefore, uh, you can't just close your eyes. You need to really to look into it. Uh, and there are a lot of impacts. Or we all know it. Uh, I have seen it in my own village in Denmark. Suddenly, uh, thousands of uh, young males came uh, uh, to a very small peaceful rural village in Denmark and what to do with all these uh, youngsters uh, they have different aspirations they they have a different lifestyle and so forth so basically it boils down to securing your borders and um, if you can't do it overnight then you have to use your 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 uh, uh, new technologies and so forth uh, but this has not come overnight. I mean, I've been living in, in India since 2010, um, and I've seen this issue. And every time I went to uh, to uh, West Bengal, I saw uh, many, many, many people from from your uh, neighbor. Uh, so it's not a new issue. And now, um, if you want to tackle that issue, and given the size of uh, the illegal immigrants that you are uh, quoting here, then of course you need to take an action. But it's again, it's not for me being the Danish ambassador to tell you what to do. It's for you really to. Uh, but we to to learn from 
Yes, Keeping that's what I'm saying. From your laws, yes. from the uh, measures that you have taken. Yes. Because, yes. you know, the, in India, the problem is not just like in America. They have Mexicans or other uh, illegal immigrants coming from other countries. They just need uh, livelihood. Yeah, and yeah, after that, that they don't disturb their... Uh, uh, because in India, they create communal problems. Mm. Because in Chile rights, three years mm. ago, we saw... Uh, and the reports have uh, you know suggested that illegal bangladeshi immigrants were involved in the in, uh, delhi riots yeah so but again it's, it's, uh, it's, it's up to your uh, government it's up to the uh, different agencies to tackle that issue and if you know it and you are quoting a number of reports and so forth uh, from quite many years back in time uh, then somebody has to look into that and i uh, it's up to you again uh, to to take notice of that problem if it has the impact politically and changing demography and so forth and of course uh, somebody should be looking into it and if you know it, the problem is there then action has to be taken but again you can look for solutions that we have uh, undertaken in my small country uh, but but in your big, big scale, uh, then it's for you to take the proper decisions yes. and uh, you oh, take inspiration from our side and uh, you're most welcome to come to Denmark and see how we have tackled that issue. But the scale is very different, I have to admit. And and because when you keep uh, these illegal immigrants in detention center, do you mm -hmm. allow them to mix with the uh, uh, general public? You know, once it is identified that somebody is illegal immigrant. It depends a little bit, uh, but if they have been uh, told to leave, then they can't just walk around freely. Uh, and then, uh, uh, that, but you know, the issue, as you also alluded to, is uh, repatriation. If they are own home country doesn't uh, want them back, uh, then uh, how to uh, deal with that? And there are th new ways of handling that in a European context. So I think you should look into that and see uh, how that can be done. But again, it's not for me, but it's for you really to take uh, decisions. If you uh, uh, don't do anything, then the problems will just multiply. And uh, so it's, again, up to uh, your side to decide what to do, how to do it. And you're most welcome to seek inspiration from our side.